I bought a Gibson six-string bass on eBay? I guess let's find out what it actually was. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogley's Guitar Show. Gibson actually did make six-string basses. There is an EB6. Those things are really cool. But what is inside this box? <laughs> it's not a six-string Gibson bass, but I had to buy it with a title like that because it was just too hilarious. What we had there was somebody who had no idea about musical instruments, so I'm kind of scared to unbox this. Assuming it wasn't a scam and there's actually a guitar in here. Well, at least there's some sort of a musical instrument in this box. Yeah, we got like a, a Korg gig bag, so we don't have an original hard shell case, but let's check out our six string bass here. <laughs> oh man, they scammed me so bad. It only has five strings. What we have here is actually known as the Corvus, and it's actually a Corvus 3, believe it or not. I've been looking for one of these, so being able to document that strange tale, as well as one of these quirky single-coil Gibson guitars, I thought, yeah, why not? So, a little bit of brief history about the Gibson Corvus. Corvus means crow in Latin. This was originally meant to be a headless guitar design. So even though this looks like some sort of a strange can opener and or Pac-Man-like guitar, it was supposed to look like a little birdie like this. Tweet tweet. And being a headless design, the tuners were initially going to go on this little ledge right here. So, that's why this kind of looks goofy, because apparently when the marketing team got a hold of this, they said, no, that thing needs a headstock. And that's when you got this strange look and one. It was used on the night as well. But these were also introduced at the exact same time as the Challenger model, and each of them were offered in one, two, and three variants. One just had a single humbucker in the bridge, two had two humbuckers, and then three, we get this cool stuff. Three single coil pickups in a Gibson. Yeah. But this was another model as part of Gibson's Bolt-On Neck series. So they had a few guitars, such as the L6 Midnight Special, the Marauder, the Gibson S1, there's the GK55, the Invader, and the Challenger that we were just talking about. But there was also a higher-end version of the Corvus known as the Futura. They were a set neck construction guitar that had a very nice swoop on the back. So the Corvuses were from about 1983 until 1984. The Futuras were from 84 to 85. There's rumors out there saying they were made completely out of one piece of wood, but Randy Leonard says that's not exactly true. And since some antique natural ones have shown up on the market that prove that, that theory is not entirely true. But the Futuras typically only came in these three main colors, but then the Corvuses came in a whole bunch of cool fruity flavors. If I remember correctly, it was seven different colors. And if you're trying to piece together a perfect mint condition collectible of a Corvus 1, 2, and 3 in all the different colors, that's 21 different guitars. That's going to take you forever to do. And this thing is absolutely filthy. So before I talk any more about this thing, let's get it on the workbench and get it cleaned up first. All right, two hours later, here it is. It's not quite perfectly clean, but it's definitely a lot more respectable than it was. There was dust caked on top of it. So I got a little bit more aggressive with the Meguiar Scratch X. And even that wasn't able to get everything off. Like there's still a few areas right here where it's just a matted over finish. Like there's still gunk on it. But anyways, let's see what these single coils are all about. The backside of them looks like this. So you've got some sort of a brass base plate and then you've got a Tim Shaw style stamp. Looks like 181083. Now going off of Tim Shaw codes, that would mean this was produced in October of 1983. I'm not sure if these use the exact same style, but probably. But they're pretty interesting single coils. You actually have two sets of adjustment springs over here and then just one on the other side. It looks like your bridge and middle pickup have different color tape on them. Maybe that's how they help tell them apart. Maybe our readings will tell us more. So 4.3 in the bridge position. The neck is a pretty weak 3.1 and 4.27 in the middle. That seems to hold true that the bridge and middle might be the same pickup, but the neck is definitely significantly different. But you also have your in-between positions here. So it's just like a Stratocaster. And this is a master volume and a master tone. I'm really excited to get to hear how these things sound. I've been hunting one of these Corvus 3s for a while. Now let's talk about our bridge. So we've got brass saddles on it, and it's actually a wrap tail piece. It is a two-piece system, and they're Schaller made in Germany, very similar to the Leo Kwan bridges. But essentially, you have this little piece that inserts inside it, like so. So this is actually acting as your tail piece, and then this is your bridge. You would also see this bridge get used on the Gibson Spirit series. You can learn all about those here. 
the posts aren't anything too special. I just took it off because it was easier to clean. But you might not notice it, but black finishes do indeed age. You can actually see the outline of the tailpiece right here where it's a slightly darker black. The same thing is true where the pickguard rests on top. Now some of that is the lacquer has yellowed more so over the visible areas. But here's what every single Corvus body looks like. It is a huge swimming pool route. So technically, if you're a collector and you want one of each version and every single color and you're really looking, you could just buy whatever color Corvus that you're looking for and then hopefully find the correct pickups to put it in. I don't want to do that because finding minty Corvus is impossible because they're all their bodies. So no matter what, you're always going to have some extreme finish checking on them just because of that. But if you happen to have a cleaner version of one of these, let me know. As far as the wiring here, everything's looking pretty nice. This pot dates to 1983, pretty early on. And this one about the same. And here's the only place that you can actually see the alder body on here. Moving on from our strange body to our maple neck with a rosewood fretboard. I know it's nice and dark, but it is rosewood. It is not ebony. You've just got your small acrylic dot inlays on here, and I polished up our frets. We do have some wear in the cowboy cord areas, but nothing too crazy. It's got your typical Gibson 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length and 12 inch fretboard radius. But I measure 1.7 inches at the nut width, 2.07 by the 12th, a first fret neck depth of 0.8 and 0.98 by the 12th. Here's that neck at the 1st and 12th fret. I would say it's a very slim 60s neck. It does slightly fatten up up here, but not by too much. The headstock's not looking too bad. You can kind of see the same phenomenon going on with our truss rod cover discolorations. This one's got some nice age to it. Corvus, even though it looks like Coroas. I wanted to point something else that I found. The channel for the truss rod is way too long. One of the screws for the truss rod cover is actually right in the channel itself. That's funny. As anticipated, that thing needed a lot of setup work. As far as getting the action dialed in, it's not too bad now. However, one benefit to this headstock style is look. It is one of the few Gibson guitars that has perfect straight string pull. Although some of these tuners are pretty stiff to move. Moving on to the backside, it's a lot more of the same stuff. You got heavy finish checking, certain areas got cleaner than others. Mainly down here that still has that haze like to the finish. But everything else actually turned out pretty smooth. But there's our crow shape. There's no comfort cuts on the backs of these. The Futuras were definitely a little bit more sculpted, but thankfully no neck pocket cracks. But you will notice somebody moved our strap button. And let me give you a pro tip here. If you're ever selling a guitar and somebody's moved the button, put another strap button in that place. It might look weird, but it's going to turn a potential buyer off much less not having an exposed hole in the guitar. But our other one is right here at the crow's beak. And also, if you just bought a guitar like that, it is good practice to put something in there because leaving an exposed hole, in theory, does leave it more susceptible to humidity changes. Or if you accidentally sweat or you're polishing the guitar, Guitar, something gets in there it can cause the wood to swell a bit it's not the end of the world if you don't but probably a good idea either put another strap button on or just have it professionally filled in but here you can see the bolt-on neck construction you don't have any angling right here and then we've got this beautiful maple neck a little bit of a worn through area right here you got a couple of nicks and dings but all things considered not that bad of a neck. You got all the beautiful 80s finish checking. I don't know why. All their bodies, maple necks, they always get vertical finish checking when they're paired together like that. The serial number of this one takes it to late 1983, about two thirds of the way through the year, made in USA. And we've got our Gibson style tuners, which yeah, I didn't clean in between them. I'm sorry. And hey, the weight's not too bad either. Six pounds, 3.2 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. All right, so with somebody changing the strap button location, I was really hoping this would be a balanced guitar, but no, they, they put it in an even worse spot than the original one. That's the one bad thing about Corvuses is they were designed without a headstock in mind for it. So naturally it's gonna be super neck divey because you don't have the tuner's weight in the body as was initially intended. But let's go ahead and see what these single coils are all about. Thank you. 
So I never really knew what to expect out of these pickups, but I mean, for Gibson single coils, they didn't sound half bad. Okay, so far not really digging them distorted. They really kind of start farting out on you, I guess is the best way to put it. So I'm finding these pickups, they're extremely touch sensitive. I wasn't really liking it for really going crazy rocking out, but if you lighten up your pick attack, you get some different characteristics out of it. Now that we know all about the Gibson Corvus 3, what are my final thoughts on this? This is one of those guitars that I think I need to sit down with one or two more times to fully bring out its full potential. Standing with it, I'll be honest, it's not all that comfortable. You're always having to support this neck and that kind of takes away some of the fun of playing it. However, I will say, sitting down and just enjoying this thing, it is a very comfy guitar. So the old advertisements where you got that guy playing it like this, that's for a reason. <laughs> but if you're really looking for a single coil Gibson guitar and you don't want to own a Fender in your collection for some strange reason, then you might enjoy one of these weird odd ducks. But let me tell you, there are tons of other guitars I would suggest buying before a Corvus. Generally, people will list these as much as 2000, but where do they sell? Typically that 1000 to 1500 is range. But as far as this example in general, do I regret picking it up, cleaning it up? having a nice review? No, 
At first, when I unboxed it, I was like, ha oh, man, what did I get myself into? But it cleaned up all right. I'm sure the setup could use a slight bit more of a dialing in, but it actually plays pretty comfortably in my opinion. So if you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Corvus 3, you can check it out on my website, trogleysguitarshow.com. And if not, hey, we'll see you tomorrow on our next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.